Okay. Hi. Good afternoon. Hi there. Uh, my name is Patrick Murphy, and I work for the Space Technology Mission Directorate. And so my question is this. Last Wednesday, India held a anti-satellite test. Oh. Now, this test created a cloud of orbital debris that's flying in low Earth orbit. And so when I think of orbital debris that they're tracking, it's the size of my fist, several, several pieces of that. Now, that's potentially of high risk to NASA assets, and more importantly to our NASA astronauts. What's NASA's reaction to that? Thank you. Oh, well, that's a great question, Patrick. <laughs> and uh, there, there's, um, this is a town hall in and of itself. Uh, it is absolutely true that intentionally creating orbital debris fields is not compatible with human spaceflight. Here's what we know about the most recent direct ascent anti-satellite test that was done by India. We know that we have identified 400 pieces of orbital debris from that one event. That's what's been identified. Now all of that cannot be tracked. What we are tracking right now, objects big enough to track, we're talking about 10 centimeters or bigger, about, about 60 pieces have been tracked. In other words, they've got a tracking number and, and we're able to keep, keep up with where they are. Of those 60, we know that 24 of them are going above the apogee of the International Space Station. That is a terrible, terrible thing to create an event that sends debris in an apogee that goes above the International Space Station. And that kind of activity is not compatible with the future of human space flight that we need to see have happen. We are charged with commercializing low Earth orbit. We are charged with enabling more activities in space than we've ever seen before for the purpose of benefiting the human condition, whether it's pharmaceuticals or printing human organs in 3D to save lives here on Earth, or manufacturing capabilities in space that aren't, you're not able to do in a gravity well. Like, all of those are placed at risk when these kind of events happen. And when one country does it, then other countries feel like they have to do it as well. So, Patrick, I'm with you. I get it. I understand it. It's unacceptable. And NASA needs to be very clear about what its impact to us is. Now, we're learning more and more every hour that goes by about this orbital debris field that has been created from this anti-satellite test. Where we were last week with an assessment that comes from NASA experts, as well as the Joint Space Operations Center, I guess it's the Combined Space Operations Center now, the CSPOC, was that the risk to the International Space Station was increased by 44 percent. The risk, and the, I'm talking about small debris impact to the International Space Station, the risk went up 44 percent over a period of 10 days. So the good thing is it's low enough in Earth orbit that over time this will all dissipate. You go back in time, 2007, direct ascent to anti-satellite test by the Chinese, all of that orbital debris is, not all of it, but a lot of it is still in orbit, and we're still dealing with it. And we're still, we as a nation are responsible for doing space situation awareness and space traffic management, conjunction analysis for the entire world, and we're doing it for free, compliments of the taxpayer of the United States of America, from an orbital debris field that was created by another country. Why do we do that as a nation? Because it's the right thing to do? Because we want to preserve the space environment? And I know, I know why you asked the question, Patrick, the, the, the Space Technology Mission Directorate. You're responsible under Space Policy Directive 3, signed by the President of the United States for the first time in American history for building the technologies and the capabilities ultimately to, to ensure that we can track this kind of debris in the future at a better state than we can right now. With the, the United States Air Force and uh, Strategic Command right now, they've got a lot of different programs in place. The Space Fence, right now we're able to, to track about 23,000 pieces of orbital debris, things that are 10 centimeters or bigger. With the Space Fence coming online, we're going to be looking at hundreds of thousands of pieces of orbital debris. Some people say 200,000, some people say 500,000. Bottom line is we don't know. What we do know is whatever it looks like, it's going to be scary. And what we have to do is we have to get a lot better at figuring out how to reduce uh, the bubbles around each one of those objects in low Earth orbit that could risk, put at risk the International Space Station so we don't have to constantly be maneuvering the International Space Station. 
I guess to, the, the point is this. NASA has a role to play here, especially when it comes to protecting the lives of our astronauts. NASA has a role to play here when it talks about the new technology, the new capabilities under Space Policy Directive 3 signed by the President to make sure that our people are safe and that our hundreds of billions of dollars worth of assets in low Earth orbit are safe. Um, and we have a role to play with the Commerce Department. Under Space Policy Directive 3, space situation awareness, space traffic management is not going to be done by Strategic Command anymore. It's going to be done by the Commerce Department, which I think is a great move because this is not just about national security, it's about economic development. Um, how that gets developed, of course, again, that's another town hall. But at the end of the day, we need to be clear with everybody in the world, we're the only agency in the federal government that has human lives at stake here. And it is not acceptable for us to allow people to create orbital debris fields that put at risk our people. I, 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 want, it, I want to anchor here because there's probably people here sending tweets and all kinds of things right now based on my comments. Know this, while the risk went up 44%, our astronauts are still safe. The International Space Station is still safe. If we need to maneuver it, we will. The probability of that, I think, is low. But at the end of the day, we have, we have to be clear also that these activities are not sustainable or compatible with human spaceflight. So thank you for the question. Again, I, we'll do a whole other town hall about this and, and the, the vision NASA has ultimately for how situational awareness and space traffic management should unfold in the future. Uh, but Patrick, that's a, that's a great, great point.